Good day, fellow learners. This is your mentor, your fact check by the Gapus. Once again, joining you for another learning and teaching session this time around. We're now on set number 48 for our next generation NCLEX RN pointer. So without further ado, let's start the ball rolling. So before we get to initiate our interaction in this set of pointers, may I first knock on your good heart to join us in this mission. Our goal is to provide free NCLEX RN application and review to 100 nurses. We've done this successfully in the past two years, and that is through the support that you have given our YouTube channel. So to help us achieve this, just watch and finish the ads in our videos. Once again, thank you so much for doing so. Thank you in advance. So here are our pointers, set number 48. Now, the first question that you have to ask yourself when you're preparing for the next generation NCLEX is, what are the things that I need to study? And you need to get an expert opinion for you to be able to have a clear overview of what you need to focus on. That's the key word, focus, okay? So in this set of pointers, allow me to highlight one important concept and that is Vaginitis. Vaginitis is actually a general uh, label for conditions that could lead to inflammation of the vagina. And there are things that you have to remember about this. So whenever you think of vagination, think about the four common complaints of clients with this condition. It could be painful urination or painful sex. So this does not um, just happen once. Okay, This could actually persist. Vaginal bleeding, itching, and vaginal discharge. That should give you the clue. When there's itching and vaginal discharge, think about an infection. And the next important thing that you have to remember is what type of discharge is the patient having? Is it grayish white? and fishy in smell, thick white and cheesy in characteristics, or is it greenish yellow and throaty in its appearance? Therefore, each of these types of discharges corresponds to a specific causative agent. Like for example, a greenish white fishy discharge could mean there's bacterial infection. The thick white cheesy discharge could mean there's a yeast infection or yeast growth. And if there's greenish yellow throaty discharge, that could mean there's going to be an, a condition that could be related to the presence of a parasite or a protozoa. So when the discharge is grayish white and it smells fishy, think about bacterial vaginosis. That is the most common vaginal infection among females. And take note, if there's thick, white, and cheesy discharge, think about a yeast infection, moniliasis or candidiasis, the second most common vaginal infection among definitely Americans. And of course, when there's greenish yellow photo discharge, think about parasitic or protozoal infection, and that could be associated with trichomoniasis. So when it's grayish, vaginosis. When it's cheesy and white, moniliasis or candidiasis. When it's greenish, trichomoniasis. Now, if your patient is having any of these manifestations, it's important that you perform thorough assessment. Okay. And if we speak of thorough assessment, what do we need to focus on? Okay, we need to focus on the risk factors that they could be having because based on this, a diagnosis is arrived at and the specific treatment can actually be identified. So for patients with bacter bacterial vaginosis, it's usually treated with clindamycin. Of course, that's an antibiotic 
or your metronidazole. Now, there's certain things that we have to remember related to clindamycin. First and foremost, it could cause your DVI, diarrhea, vomiting, and itching. And take note, it's both hepatotoxic and nephrotoxic. So if the client could be having persistent anorexia, think about hepatotoxicity. If the patient's having decreased urine output, think about acute kidney injury. So your clindamycin is usually to be taken by the client um, twice a day, 300 milligrams for each dose, and that's usually taken for seven days. And then, of course, you have your metronidazole. Your metronidazole would usually cause uh, darkened urine. So instruct the client that that's not a cause for alarm. And you will have to instruct the client to avoid sex for at least a week if they have taken your metronidazole and they have to avoid alcohol within 24 hours after taking the medication because that could potentially worsen the hepatotoxic effects of the drug. And for monoliasis, Take note, uh, it's usually treated with echinocandine that's given per IV. That's an antifungal medication. The common side effect would be flushing and rushes. And it's also hepatotoxic. So note for the loss of appetite, yellowing of the sclera, and of course, of the skin. Now, ampotericin is also antifungal. The most common side effect is diarrhea. Take note that it can potentially become nephrotoxic. So it's best to administer it in diluted form with 5% dextrose in water, and it's administered intravenously over a two to six hour period. Now we have to remember that we need to flush the IV tubing with D5 water before and after administering the medication. And of course, for trichomonaniasis, okay, it is also treated with metronidazole. For trichomoniasis, metronidazole is the first line of treatment. Usually, it's given as a single dose orally, and the client is given two grams. Or it's given in four white pills form, and each pill contains 500 milligrams. This, if the patient's taking the 500 milligrams pills, instruct the client to take all four pills at the same time and take the full glass of water and definitely instruct the client to avoid um, alcohol in the next 24 hours and most importantly avoid sexual intercourse for at least a week to make sure that the, the medication has already exerted its therapeutic effects and the condition has already been treated when the patient resumes any sexual activity okay so when signs of vaginitis occur what do we need to ask the client we need to ask the client um if they are doing using or has any of the following one we need to ask them if they are douching if they have uncontrolled diabetes mellitus if they are they already have menopause because after menopause, there's usually an imbalance in the hormones that increases the risk for vaginitis. We ask them if they are pregnant or if they are fond of wearing tight fitting or damp clothes because this tight fitting and damp clothes could usually, um, is a good culture medium for bacterial growth. And if they are using a toilet paper properly, so they have to wipe um, the perineal area from front to back, making sure that no fecal matter is um, delivered into the vaginal area. And of course, if they are using tampons, because this could increase the risk for vaginitis. We also need to assess if they are taking oral pills or they are using intrauterine device, or if they are sexually active or have had history of sexually transmitted infection, or if they are taking steroids and antibiotics. All of these are risk factors to vaginitis. Now, what are the things that we need to instruct our clients to avoid when they have vaginitis? We instruct them to avoid our code BUDS, which simply means it's an acronym for bathtubs, bubble or whirlpool baths, having multiple sexual partners that should be avoided, definitely. Uh, underwear worn to bed. So it's better if they don't wear their underwear at night so that 
uh, the perineal area could at least be exposed to air and then avoid douching that could further push your microorganisms into the vaginal canal and avoid soap with deodorant or antibacterial action. So instruct the client to avoid life boy antibacterial soap or and instead use your Dove or Castile unscented soaps. So it would be best if they use the unscented soap so they don't suffer from irritation of the vaginal mucosa. So to prevent vaginitis, the client should wear pantyhose with cotton crotch they can wear pantyhose however the crotch area should be lined with cotton that facilitates absorption of moist that would definitely lessen the incidence of vaginitis okay so let me share with you the success story of han bautista good day sir Ray. i have good news i passed my entrance exam i took it last april 29 very very recent 2024 sir words are not enough to so thank you um your heaven sent, she said that in Tagalog, hulog po kayo ng langit. I can humbly say that my exam went smoothly because of the knowledge that you imparted on us, plus the strategies that you taught us, and of course, with the guidance of God. So I'm confident that I aced the case studies because of the syndromic approach. This approach is my favorite. I also had a lot of standalone questions, and I used the concepts plus the strategy of elimination. And it's really true. It's as if I'm hearing your voices. Okay, you stupid girl or gaga. Okay, there are only two options left. Don't dare choose the wrong option. Okay, so my review journey wasn't easy. I only had one month to focus before the exam. I had to file a leave from my work for a month to attend two quick fix. The quick fix program is the one that I do on a monthly basis for three days each session the boot camp is also done quarterly and we do it for 10 days and that's usually being done in Baguio city those face-to-face -face lectures and the mentoring really helped me plus the 311 book okay. i followed your advice to read 311 before the exam during the exam i read every question a couple of times and take note from the first letter to the last period analyze it the way we did in our bootcamp and quick fix and i finished my exam at 85 that's 85 items thank you so much to everyone to the mentors and the staff of our agrs and praying that you will still have a long life to help other nurses fulfill their american dreams you're the best today all aspiring usrns trust by our agrs system and pray that you are all next see you in the usa and Join these hundreds of thousands of nurses in more than 30 countries who have experienced the joy of our classes and the happiness that they feel after passing the test. Most of them on their first try. So the second question that we need to focus on and we need to ask ourselves when we're preparing for NGN is how do we study for the test? It's important that you study with the use of technology and it should be with the right technology that's aligned with your thinking process as an Easterner or as an Asian nurse. So our learning tools are uniquely created based on Gen Z learner characteristics and these are very, very culturally aligned to the mindset of the Filipino learner. So I asked one of our pastors recently, which part of our review helped you the most? And of course, Gladys Anthony answered, it's the quick fix survey. I attended three sessions, and in one quick fix session, I wrote everything letter per letter up to the last period because I'm always busy with my work. That's why I only focus during the quick fix. And then I read 311, that's NCLEX 311, my book, twice. And I read that before I took the exam. There were a lot of things that came out from the book. Let me say that and read it in Tagalog. Marami pong lumabas doon. I'm not the one saying it. It's our pastor. Maraming salamat po talaga. Thank you, sir. Biyaya kayo sa amin. You are a blessing to us. Thank you so much for the kind appreciation. And of course, our course shells are available. You just send us a note or a message on our official Facebook page or through our YouTube channel. And of course, the third requirement to pass the NGN, when you're doing your class, you have to be in a conducive environment. A conducive environment, you have a simulator like this, and you have a face-to-face -face class with 
just the enough number of learners. So may I invite you to join me in my next generation NCLEX RN Flex class, the most flexible test prep class for the NCLEX RN. Your choice of live face-to-face, -face, live virtual class, on-demand and limited video recording lessons, QBank and three books, plus the NGN strategies and sample questions. And of course, you are to be given a free access to my quick fix sessions. Our fee starts at 3,499, inclusive of three books, and of course, the use of our QBank. Okay, so once again, this is your mentor, your fact check buddy Ray Gapus at your service. I'll see you back again in my next video.